this official, everyone on the internet is possessed. The world is weird. We will investigate unexplained phenomena. It's a bit convenient, isn't it? There's something happening in the world that is evil. God is here. And the devil is too. What the hell? What happened? Religion. Evil. New season June 12th. Binge season one and two now exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. The final chapter of the NBA season is underway. We got Golden State in Boston battling for the crown. Stack, you still feel good about your Golden State pick? I do. I do. Even, even though they're going back to Boston, and Boston has home court advantage now, uh, the experience and the confidence of, of the way they play in game one, I think that'll get them a win on the road to even the series. The intensity of the NBA Finals is unmatched. That's why DraftKings Sportsbook is up in the stakes. This week, new customers can bet just $5 on either team to win and get $150 in free bets instantly. All customers can build their very own same game parlay. Take player props, game spreads, and so much more. The more legs you add to your ticket, the more money you can win. Be sure to check out this week's All the Smoke Same Game Parlays. We're going to end the season hot. I can feel it. Head over to the app and see who we're riding with this week. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code SMOKE. Bet just $5 on any pro basketball team and get $150 in free bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE at DraftKings Sportsbook. Welcome back to All the Smoke, New York City. Yes, 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 yes. Our last yes. and final show of the day, man. We got a good one, Jack. I'm happy. This is somebody who I idolize. I've been idolized. I tell him all the time, but I'm gonna let you introduce him. Before <laughs> I introduce him, I've been when I thought of this show, he was one of the first people I hit, like, gee, I need you. And he's like, uh, it's when he first started working on the book. Three, three years ago? Yeah, two, three years ago. About three years ago. And we finally got him. You see, the book is out now. Make sure you pick it up. But we got the one and only, my guy, big brother, Grant Hill. Hey, I appreciate it, G man. Money. It's, it's an honor and a privilege. Come on, man. Thank you, thank you, thank and you. I appreciate y'all patience. Yeah, come on, man. We come out here with the book, G, man. If it took you five years to write this nah. bitch, we would have waited for you. We would have waited, exactly. Yeah, come on, man. It's just an honor to have you on. Um, let's get right to it. Talk about the book. Right. Where, uh, what it's about. It's about my life and my journey. Um, you know, going back, growing up, uh, Duke years, Detroit, the injuries, going through that whole ordeal. <clears throat> I felt like getting in the Hall of Fame. That's a moment when you're going to be naturally reflective. Right. You know, we go through life, and as an athlete, you got to go and just like, like next. You got to just, you don't get a chance to really reflect on what you're doing. But that moment, that celebration, it was like, you know, I need to do this. I need to write a book. And then, you know, it took a minute in the process and then COVID and, you know, whatever the case may be. But it was, it was an incredible exercise. I think everybody should go through the, the process. We mm -hmm. all got a story. Mm -hmm. I think we get older. We go back and look at our lives. We learn the lessons. We can see things from an older perspective. Uh, I think it's about being vulnerable. It's about being introspective. Like, it, to me, the process of the book, like, I learned, it might sound crazy, but I learned more about myself. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And I think we spend so much time, you know, we play, and you got to stay in the moment. Right. And you keep, every day you're fighting. You know, every day somebody's trying to take your spot. And then you retire, and you're like, hey, what's next? Right. We're all hustling, trying to figure things out. And so we don't look back mm -hmm. and... We don't look back all the time and live in those moments. And so anyway, I, I don't want to get too deep on that. But like to me, um, it, it exceeded my expectations of, of what I learned about myself and my growth. And to share that and to be comfortable putting it all out there mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, it's a it lot, was good. Man. It's, it is. It's, it's opening that door. Right. It's really opening that door. And like you said, so y'all got to write a book. Y'all got to write one. Oh, yeah. Because no, y'all both got stories, down man. Down the pipeline, yeah. After watching the finals... Everything that's going on right now, what's your, what's your opinion so far? You know, <laughs> Golden State, I don't want to say it's dominated, but they've won seven quarters. Right, yeah. You know, two games, eight quarters. 
And that fourth quarter, game one, got away from them. They got to be kicking themselves right now. Um, but the way they came out in game two, um, they were able to take away the, you know, the others. So, like, Boston hasn't played well at home throughout this series, and they've been up and down. They'll have a good game and then follow up with a bad game. So, you know, I, I said all along, I think Golden State in six. I That's still think I that. I still think Golden State will, will figure it out. I think Clay will play better. Um, I like this Boston team, though. I mm -hmm. like the way they defend. They got mm -hmm. a toughness about them. Tatum's gotten better. Um, Brown, I mean, the way they've played together. It reminds me a little bit of, like, what could have been with me and T-Mac if yeah. I had been healthy. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, nah, I mean, I, I think Golden State, which is incredible, thinking what they've been through the last three right. years to get back. Mm -hmm. That's and what I said too. This might be, and this is no disrespect towards Golden State, but this might be their most, Absolutely. their least talented roster of all the teams they had going to the final. I don't know how you yeah. feel about that. I was going to say most meaningful. Okay, yeah, yo, definitely, definitely. But no, yeah. I agree with you, yeah. though, too. I agree with you, too. Like, you know what I mean? They had, the, I think what led them before, obviously their core was great and young, but they had a strong veteran bench. No question. And that's what they made that dynasty run for. Then to lose KD, Clay gets hurt, Steph gets hurt, they fall flat on their face. Right. To be able to re, like, teams don't rebuild that fast. Remember, right. Steph said we're going to be a problem next year. They didn't make the play in last year. You know what I mean? So for them to bounce back and get, I think this will probably be one of the most meaningful ones to them, in my opinion. I agree. I agree. You know, it, look, I, and I went through it, you know, my injury and all that, and I'm sure we'll get into it, but when something's kind of taken away, right. you, you tend to appreciate mm -hmm. and value it more. And so I know Clay, obviously, what he's gone through, but it's a feel-good story. And, you know, I think everyone likes to see them get back to the mountaintop. I know it's good for ratings yeah. mm -hmm. when Golden State's there, but mm -hmm. it's uh, it's been a good series. I, I think mm -hmm. Boston's going to win another game or so, but I think, I think Golden State wins. Great learning experience, too, though, for Boston. You know, that they're getting a great taste to me on, on how to do it on the biggest stage. You know what I mean? They had immediate success. Tatum's rookie year, you make the Eastern Finals, LeBron beat you. Took a while to kind of figure it out. Ime Udoka, shout out Ime Udoka, first year coach, to kind of get his hands on the team and be able to form them so fast. It took a half a season. Right. And they've been the, the best team in the league the second half of the year. So I think it's going to be a great learning experience. I mean, obviously, it's never promised. We all know that. Going back to the finals is never promised. But I think they're going to learn a lot from this finals, obviously. Yeah, look, I mean, there was a lot of criticism this year early on. Could, they, could those guys coexist? They were 17 and 19 before the new year. Um, but they figured it out. Right. And all that, you know, as we know, you go through tough times, it just, it builds grit, it builds resolve, and um, they got a lot of runway in front of them. And so this team, you know, it's not good for my Hawks, but this team is going <laughs> to be for real for, for many years to right. come. Right. How do you think you would be in this era? Oof. Your game. You know, I think, I think with the spacing, and then now they've taken a little bit of the physicality out of the game. I, I think I could, it's just more open. You think about it, back in the yeah. day, you had big guys in the paint clogging up. And I, I like but to But you slash. were still dunking on them, though. Yeah, so, Thanks. I mean, you know. I, you I, know, I, G's go, G is so nice. He no, no, no. I mean, G would yeah, fuck I mean, I the league up right people, now. People, you already know that. Like you said, with like, the spacing. I know. It. Like, when you look back, like, we, we were in Detroit. We were averaging 81 a game. Like, mm -hmm. we didn't run. We played methodical. We didn't mm -hmm. get up and down like it is now. So, yeah, man. I, I, yeah. And the money? <laughs> and the money's sick. And the money's sick. The money's crazy. Uh. So, but, you know, I mean, I, I enjoyed my time. It was... It was a different league. The games evolved. The shootings. I mean, there's a lot of things that are better. There's some things I don't like about mm -hmm. the current league. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, man. I, I mean, I mean, man, y'all, I mean, this dude right here in this era? <laughs> I would have had some fun. Yeah, oh, no question. Undersized fours. Yeah, I would have had some fun. Undersized You've been fours. a five, man. You'd have been a five. Four and I, five. I, I, look, I'm sorry. I know you play with Draymond. Every time I see Draymond, I say this. But I'm like, Draymond, you checked in the game. I would have been dropped three. Mm. All day. Posted you. I don't know how he like. He's like a rim protector, and he's in there. Guard he's big six, man. How tall is he? Six 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 at least. But he gets it done, man. Right. Like I, I don't, you know. But anyway, it, it was a different league, man. But yeah, I'd have done all right. One player you think one player you would want to play with today? Mm. I mean, right now, obviously he's getting up there, and things are a little bit crazy in LA. But I would have liked to have played with LeBron. Oh, yeah. And um, nice. I don't know LeBron like that. I mean, he, we've always been good, and he, but I, I don't. I'm not in his circle like that. But um, I think everybody that plays with him, he's like a glue guy. Mm -hmm. The guys that play with him love him. Like he's inclusive. 
um, you know, he he thinks the game at a high level. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also think no one's endured as much hate. We talked about that, yeah. To live LeBron. up to the hype and exe- exceed well, the, it. The hype and all, what he's done, but just, you think about, like, Jordan didn't have to experience Mm-mm. that. Mm-mm. When we played in the 90s, it was talk radio, maybe the newspaper, but you didn't hear the noise. Day you didn't day. hear the slander. And, and now, for someone like him, the face of the franchise, who's been so good, man, he's got to endure so much just... I mean, we all sense. we all get it. I'm, right. I'm sure you guys, yeah, man, this dude. So I'm just, I got sorry about Matt. So I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm getting <laughs> off. But so when, when Twitter, when Twitter first came out, I think we were in. Maybe it was Instagram. I can't Twitter. remember. So Matt, you know, somebody might say something slick to Matt on Twitter, and Matt would come back at him like full speed. No, no, no. Let me tell you. We're going to be in your city on this day, and we're staying at this hotel. Meet me at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. in the lobby. He pulled me to the side one day. Like, Matt, you got to stop that. <laughs> Something wrong with him, dog. But I, so he wanted all the smoke. But, like, literally, <laughs> and like, I, you know, like, I was like, yo. But, like, you know, just, it, it was around that time. The game was right. changing. But we hear all that. Right. And we're adults. We're older. We're, we're, mm. we're you know, I'm almost, I'm be 50 this year. Mm. But these young kids, man, like, right. I think it does affect them a little bit when they hear all that. And they're still... Mm impressionable, they're still trying to find their way. So I don't envy that. And I think LeBron has been sort of the poster boy of that. Right. And so yeah. I admire that he's been able to just, right. you know, he doesn't always win, he doesn't always do, you know, but he he handles all that and handles it well. Very well, yeah. yeah. Uh, born in Dallas, Texas. Uh, your dad was a Pro Bowl, Super Bowl champ with the running, uh, with the Cowboys. Is that the last time they won the Super Bowl? Man, go ahead <laughs> on, man. Go ahead. Don't do that. Don't do that. Mom was successful business, only child. Um, football, you were always in the mix as a youngster in football. Talk about those times growing up as an only child in that environment. Yeah, so I was the only child of two only children. And um, <laughs> so it was just us. And um, But, you know, football was my first love. Mm-hmm. And grew up around it. I was, na- I was named by Roger Staubach. So my dad, my mom and dad were expecting a girl. And... Um, Obviously, I'm not a girl, <laughs> but um, so my dad can't make up his mind. And so I was baby boy Hill for like three days and Starback came to the hospital and, you know, came up with the name Grant, named after my paternal grandmother's maiden name. Um, and so we moved to D.C. And, you know, that rivalry, particularly in the late 70s, early 80s, Red, it's yes, always been intense, but it was the Redskins were good, Cowboys coming off the 70s. So. I was a die, like I'm a cowboy fan, like die hard. Me but too. that was tough being in DC and, and being, oh, he's, he's not a. Me I'm, too. I'm a Niner fan. Niner fan. Oh, yeah. come on, of all teams. <laughs> um, that's our nemesis right there. Sure. But look, I was on the, I was on the, the parade on the float when the Redskins won, and I think it was 82, 83, they beat the Dolphins. So I was on the float. Dave Butts, who was the uh, lineman, I went on the float with him and his family. And I remember how proud I was because underneath my jacket I had a cowboy shirt on. <laughs> and so that was, uh, but, but football was everything, man. And, and my dad wouldn't let me play. He wouldn't let me play till I got to high school. And so um, that killed me. And, um, you know, I resented it. And, uh, and so I kind of got away from it. And by the time I was in high school, you know, I wanted to play. I was in basketball. I was all mm-hmm. in. But football was my first love, no mm-hmm. question. Mm. When did you realize basketball can take you places? I first, I first fell in love with basketball, 82 Final Four, Jordan hit that shot. Mm-hmm. Jordan, North Carolina, Georgetown. We, we bought a Betamax. We taped that game. <laughs> and so that was when I fell in love. And then a couple years later, my dad and I started going to Final Fours. So when Georgetown won in 84, and we went every year from 84 to 88. That was our little, you know, father-son mm-hmm. bonding or whatever. And so I think for me, it was probably like AAU. I was 13. And we went to uh, St. Louis. First game we played, we played Weber, mm. Jalen, Super Friends. Mm. And uh, I talk about it in the book. Like my dad, he, was, he, saw, he saw all these guys and he saw us. And he was like, I'm going to get my speech ready for in case they lose. And we smacked them. We beat them by really? like 25, 30. And, um, and, um, and so then that tournament, we won the national championship. And so at that point, I'm like, 
You know what? Like seeing myself, gauging myself against other kids. Alan Henderson was there. Jamal Mashburn. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys all made it to the NBA. So there's like thir thirteen year olds, you say? We well, were thirteen, but here's the thing: I was I was young for my grade. So I started college or high school at thirteen. I started college at seventeen. So mm. I should have been uh, probably with Webb and them. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But I was going into high school, and so I played varsity as a freshman while those guys were at all 13. in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And so when I came back the next year, I was like, I was, mm -hmm. I had surpassed all of them. I, we lost in the finals. I still got the MVP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so that was when, around that time, it was like, okay, I got a chance to, to I wasn't thinking the NBA, but mm -hmm. I got a chance in college. Right. Yeah. Gentlemen, Father's Day is around the corner, and our friends at Manscaped are here to ensure all father figures are out there looking daddy material this June. Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0, which includes their signature Lawnmower 4.0, is the perfect bundle to tackle any and all old man hair from the head to toe. This right here is no dad joke. Treat him and yourself and join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. Manscaped is designed with fathers in mind, and the Performance Package 4.0 is here just in time for your pop's special day. Inside this package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear, nose, and hair trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a traveling bag that holds your goodies. First off, let me start by saying the Lawnmower 4.0 will be the official MVP of Father's Day. Their fourth generation trimmers feature a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and also has a 400K LED spotlight he needs for more precise shave. Does your dad use the same trimmer for his body and face? Let's throw that out the window and give him the upgrade he deserves. But wait, there's more. Manscaped just launched their brand new Boxer 2.0. That dare I say, the best boxers ever? We all know dads love their comfort. With summer just around the corner, the Boxer 2.0 are here to save every father from the uncomfortable heat. These new boxers are packed with revolutionary features including the jewel pouch, designed to cradle the boys in their own special space. This right here is a game changer. Whether he's mowing the lawn, taking out the trash, or golfing in the sun, these moisture wicking boxers breathe without breaking a sweat. Dads, buy these for yourself. Son, buy these for your dads. Ladies, buy these for your man. And the dog daddies, you deserve this treat too. Get 20% off plus free shipping with cold smoke at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code SMOKE. Shake what your mama gave you? Nah, shake what your daddy gave you. What was your recruiting process like? You know, it was good. It was, uh, you know, I mean, for me, it was, it was, it was Carolina Georgetown. Those were the two schools that I loved. Dad wanted you to go to UNC. Yeah. Mama wanted you to go to Georgetown. Man, that's right. I did. <laughs> so we we had we had we had we had uh, season tickets. So we would go to Georgetown games. And I don't know if you remember Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Played was point guard. Mm -hmm. So he went to my high school. He used to work for my mother in the summers. My mom introduced Pat Ewing to his wife. So I was so, I was entrenched with Georgetown. Like I was all in, um, like we all were. I think at that time, mm -hmm. black team, I thought it was a, I thought it was HBCU back then. I didn't realize mm -hmm. as right. like an 11, 12, you know, I didn't realize it was, a, it was a private school, but so Georgetown, Carolina, Michigan, Virginia, and Duke. And I made my first visit and it was to Duke. And Coach K just kind of blew me away. And I knew right then that I wanted to be there. And, and the genius of Coach K, and I know, you know, love, hate, Duke, and all that. And obviously now he's had, he had great success at the end and coached the Olympic team. But his ability to get people to buy in. He wasn't a great X and O coach. But, like, if he sat, he looked you in the eye, like, you believed in him. Oh. And, and that was his genius, getting everybody to kind of, like, buy in to him and buy into one another. And um, so Duke, Duke really wasn't my fate, but like, it, you know, it just felt right. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, made that decision. And, you know, fortunately we, we made history. You win titles in 91 and 92. Right. Uh, the famous Christian Leighton shot. How big was that moment? Man, it's crazy. You know, it's crazy to think that was 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And people still, people still talk about it, but, um, Christian was a great college player. I mean, Alonzo, Shaq. 
Um, I mean, everybody he faced, he dominated Shaq twice. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, he, um, and we had a good team. I mean, Bobby was a great college point guard. I was, you know, I was a good player. He had three, he had three guys in the college basketball hall of fame. And so, um, so those moments were incredible. I, I don't think we realized while we were doing it, the significance of what was happening. Right. We were moment. just trying to win. We were, I was 19 and I was a kid. And, um, but that pass to Leitner, that shot, um, Leitner didn't miss a shot the whole game. Mm. Leitner was cocky. Leitner was like, he, he talked trash. Um, he also had a, he was a great teammate as well. I remember we had a game, I talk about in the book, we had a game, we went to Buffalo to play Canisius. And it was a game for him, going back to his hometown. And at halftime, he had like one or two shots. And Coach K is like, like, Christian, what's going on? Like, this game's for you. You act like you don't want to play. And he's like, I want my hometown to see how good my teammates are. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you coming back home, college player of the year, you're going to mm -hmm. try to show out. Mm -hmm. But he was trying to show us out. Mm. And um, so he, he, you know, you don't hear about that right. side of Christian. You just hear the, you know, the crazy, and there was a lot of craziness, but, <laughs> um, but he was, he was a great competitor. Was, you know, he, he, and he, and he did his work. He did his thing. With all the noise and, and knowing how everybody feel about Duke, right. is the brotherhood tight enough to block out the noise and stay strong? You know, yeah, I mean, it, it's funny, man, because I don't think we were aware of what people's perceptions were back then of Duke. And I looked at Duke no different than I looked at Wake Forest, Georgia Tech, mm -hmm. Georgetown. These are PWIs that have good basketball teams. And so I get it with the, you know, us beating Vegas and the Fab Five and obviously Jalen's documentary and how they felt towards us. But I, I wasn't aware of that. Like, I, I honestly, <laughs> like we, we got along with every like you know Webb was my guy. I talked some stories about Weber in there when we were in high school. He used to come visit me in Virginia. Um, you know we didn't have social media. We right. didn't read the newspaper back then. So we were in Durham. We'd go to Durham. We'd go to cookouts, barbecues, barbershop. Everybody showed love. So I don't think I was aware that there was this stigma. Yeah, like this. Mm -hmm. Now I should have known better because I didn't like the Celtics for the very reason Same people reason. didn't like us. Right. I was a Laker fan, mm -hmm. and I identified with the Lakers, but I think because we had really good white players mm -hmm. and had a, a Ferry, Leitner, Hurley, maybe I fit this, like, image, you know, my parents, and, you know, people thought what they thought about me. I think that might have contributed to the narrative. But at the time, like, I, I was totally oblivious to that narrative. And... Um, and not until years later. I even thought the hate towards Duke later on was because Duke had success. Like the Yankees or like, um, you know, the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize, like, I didn't really realize mm -hmm. it. You could have used a better example, but I feel you. Yeah, yeah you or, or the go. 49ers, you know. There you go. They, you know, and yeah. so, um, mm -hmm. but I get it now. Like, I understand. And it was an interesting time. And, um, you know, and so, I, you know, I get the, but yeah, the brotherhood strong. Coach K has moved on. You know, Shires recruited well. Um, you know, we, we hope to stay relevant, man. That's, mm. that's, that's the main thing. Mm. 94 draft, you go number three overall to Detroit. What are you hearing leading up to the draft? I mean, Glenn Robinson, Jason Kidd, yourself. Right. What are you hearing leading up to there? Are you hearing one, two, three? So this was, this was crazy. So Glenn, Glenn, was, Glenn was incredible in college. 30 a game. Like, I mean, he was... Big dog. He was unreal, man. And I think he's underappreciated. Like, people don't... He came in at 21 his first, first year in the league, uh, scoring 21 a game. So at the, at the draft lottery, Mike Dunleavy, who's the coach of GM, puts up his jersey. So that's a sign they're going to take him. So I figured, you know, Dallas had the number two pick. They had Jimmy Jackson, Jamal Mashburn. So they're going to they're gonna take mm -hmm. J. Kidd, which, which, which was the right, you know, right decision. So Detroit, to me, they had Lindsey, they had Allen Houston. That felt like the right fit. But Milwaukee wanted me to come in and work out for him. I didn't want to go. And my agent was like, that's the number one pick. Like, you got to go out of respect. So I went there. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be in Milwaukee. Yep, I don't blame you. I dogged the workout. Mike Dunleavy put me through this. Like, he was, I was doing laps and suicide. Like, he was killing me. And then he wanted to play me one-on-one. -on -one. Mike did? Coach Dunleavy. <laughs> and so I'm like, 
So we check ball, and I'm standing under the basket. He's at the free throw. He said, you're not going to guard me? I said, I don't think you can make that. And, man, he hit, like, 10 in a row on me, man. Like, I, would, I, I wouldn't guard him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was like, what is he doing? Like, you know, but, I, you know, he wanted to see me compete against him, which I didn't get. But Did you? No, I didn't guard him. I was like, <laughs> man, I don't even want to be there. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know. Said, fuck this. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but Detroit was where I wanted to be, and um, I felt like they had won recently. And, um, you know, the colors red, white, and blue, I felt was good, you know, good for my feelers, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, <laughs> right. you had a, a, a nice catalog of, of Nikes over at Duke. What made you choose... Fila, because they were uh, obviously a lesser-known brand at the Go time. Go get that bag. Get so that let me, let's, bag. let me tell you what happened, man. So, so it was crazy. So I go out to Nike, and, you know, you go out there for your recruiting trip. They take you through the store. You get all this stuff. So Phil Knight, we obviously know his, his genius. He was thinking about the Far East in 1994. And he was like, man, if I can go into China and penetrate that market, and there's a billion-plus people that I can get shoes on them, like, he was, he was talking about this in this meeting. And he wanted me to be via satellite at the Great Wall of China for the draft. And, like, that would be a way to break into that mm. market. And I was like, no, I want to be, I want to be... My family, I want to be friend. with David Stern, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, that's a dream. We all dream that, to getting drafted and, and that whole thing. And so, but I tell that story, like, that's where his head was at. But when they started negotiating, the money wasn't, like, it wasn't fitting the vision, you know what I'm saying? And so I went over reluctantly over to meet Fila, and I knew they had Mashburn, but I know we, we went through, we toured the facility, and then we sat in the boardroom, and they had this, this, like, proposal. And on page two was the money. And I turned that page, and I was like, oh, my God. I was like, you know, I, the, the money that they were offering, like, the guaranteed base salary and the royalty... I was like, like you said, get that bag. And no, I, was, I know get that this bag. is not, you're not get the type of person to talk about this, but I just kind of want to have context because it's 1994. Can you explain like what kind of money it was at that time compared to maybe what some of the guys may be getting today? So Nike was offering me about 500,000. And Fila was basically, it was a five-year, $15 million deal. Go and get that bag. And so at the, you get know, that like... Bag. Oh, $15 million a lot. It was right. more money in 1994. Right. And so 94. that was a guaranteed royalty. Mm -hmm. And the shoe ended up exceeding, I think, everyone's expectation. But I was like, hey, you know. To this day, still selling. I still get a royalty check. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first impression, uh, it's, it's in Detroit. It's the end of the bad boy era. And now you are coming in to be the face of the franchise. Yeah, you know, it, it was crazy, man, because the team had won 20 games. I came in, there was a void in the league. MJ had retired. I think the league was looking for a face. I played in 120-some-odd games at Duke, and all but five of them were on national TV. So people, I think, knew who I was. And I came out the gate. And I was, I was like, Kill I came out the gate like, on one. Mm -hmm. I came out the gate, I think I had 25, 10, and 5 my first game against the Lakers. And like my first 10, 15 games, I was 20, like more than 20 a game. I was calling my boys like, man, the NBA is easy, man. Like, <laughs> and like, look, I, you know, until they get a scouting report on you and mm -hmm. figure you out. But um, one thing that, that helped me was that that summer before my freshman or my rookie year, we played pickup ball. And in pickup ball, you know, I used, to, I used to play with it. You know, I'd come down. My, my, my favorite guy was the Pearl, Dwayne the Pearl. Kenny Anderson had great handles. I used to try to be like Tim Hardaway, Chris Jackson. So I would play with the ball. But when I played in the games, I would turn my back like, like Magic mm -hmm. and, big guard. And, and Big Guard. And so Quinn Snyder was like, man, you need to play like this in the league. Like what you're doing out here in pickup, you need to play this way, not turning your back. And so I didn't, you know, I didn't, because I didn't see big guys doing that. Mm -hmm. So when I came in at 6'8", I'm playing small forward. You didn't have guys doing mm -mm. that. Nope. And so they weren't used to having, like, Pippen could handle the ball, but Pippen like didn't you. come Not at you like that. Mm -hmm. across, no and full speed. He couldn't, so, go full, exact, couldn't go full speed and cross you. Yeah, so that, that, I think the ball handling, I was never a great shooter, at least early on. I, you know, I became a decent mid-range, but the ability to get to my spot 
and uh, at the small forward position. I think that's really helped me early on. And they were, they weren't, a, you see more of that now, guys. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody does that. But back then, you didn't have a lot of threes playing like that. Mm -hmm. As a rookie, you made the All Star game and won Co Rookie of the Year. Right. Uh, averaged 26 and 5. Mm -hmm. um, after that first year, I've you said you called your homies after the first handful of games. Were you surprised that the, actually, what you did fresh out of college in the NBA? Yeah, I, you know, I was surprised. And then I was surprised at all the fans. Like, I was like, because they kept trying to make me, like, the face. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, like, I still, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, we won 28 games, my friend. Like, I, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I'm still, I got a lot to learn. But um, that first year was crazy, man. Like, it was, you know, your shoes, you got commercials, endorsements. Um, they, they would try to call me the next Jordan, but I, I thought it was foolish. But I leveraged that. And what I mean by that is I, I monetized, like, I didn't Imagine. turn down the deals. Mm -hmm. um, but... You know, it was hard because we were losing. Yep. And you go in college where every year you feel like you have a chance to win a championship. And then now all of a sudden you, you're losing world. more games you've, than you've lo you know, lost in a lifetime. So that, that first year was kind of bittersweet. Um, but I felt like with Allen Houston, with Lindsey, that we had a promising future. And, um, you know, just wanted to get better the next year. What was your welcome to the NBA moment? Obviously, a lot of success your first year, but what was your kind of your welcome to the league moment? Was it a team? Was it a player? Was it a play? Yeah, I just think out the gates, man. Like, just, you know, coming in and, like, establishing myself, being able to do what I want. Like, it, I felt like it was easier than the college game. Mm -hmm. I think making the All-Star game my first year, like, that was probably, like, like, man, like, I'm here, you right. know? But there wasn't, like, one signature play or moment Still or game ball. or anything like that. Um, I think just out the gate coming in and, and, and putting up work and, and having success, um, it's like a dream come true. You know, I, I didn't... You got to understand, I talk about it in the book. Like, I lacked self-confidence. Like, I didn't have great confidence in myself. And I also didn't want to stand out. Mm. growing up mm. and I um, I had to get comfortable stepping into greatness I had to get comfortable with that kind of responsibility in my last year at Duke I think I really kind of got to that point which helped me when I got to the league but um, so all that attention like that wasn't something that I that I coveted you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and, and so it was a little bit you know now you got money you got fame you're young you got a little bit you know so it, it was a, it was a little it was a little wild that first year, and um, but you know, it was uh, it was fun though. I mean, I can't lie. You know, you recall your first game against. So MJ was retired your rookie year, right? He was that was the year he missed. He came back though the end of the year. End of the year. Yeah. So what was your first matchup with him like? Man, I just wanted to go at him. Man, mm. like, I, I I played against him with the dream team, but I didn't really go against him, and. Um, I crossed him up. I remember I was like geeked about that, and um, we lost the game. But mm -hmm. you know, to go against Jordan, like mm -hmm. that was that was. Uh, I'll tell you this, man. Jordan was has always been good to me. Like he always would. You know, we go out, we go eat. You know, he he. Um, I think because he lost his dad, and I think he liked my dad. He was a fan of my dad, and so you know, I don't know if it was me or what, but he always. And he talked trash about Duke, Carolina, and all mm -hmm. that, but he was always was good to me. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, I tried to go at you. I didn't guard him a lot. I'll tell you what's funny. So the summer after my rookie year, you you weren't at UCLA in '95. No, uh -huh. man, y'all, yeah, Chris Johnson, mm -hmm. Toby, man, they ran. Yeah, Jelani. Y'all ran to LA yeah. after y'all won the championship. So I'm out in LA, and I'm filming Living Single, and they created that bubble. And I go over there to play against Jordan. And I played the first day, and I'm giving him the business. <laughs> like, I am killing Jordan. Like, I'm not a shooter, but everything I'm shooting is going in. I'm, I, I'm crossing him up. So we're on the lot. They build this bubble. He's got a court. And I'm going at Jordan, and I'm giving. He wants to guard me. I'm mm. giving him the business. Mm. Matter of fact, it was, I had the shoes on, my, my GH2s. Okay. And he had his Jordan 10s with the patent. We both had patent leather. Mm. And uh, man, I'm killing him. Like, I mean, like, like after I'm calling my boys afterwards. Like, man, I'm killing Jordan. Like, he's too little. <laughs> like all this stuff. <laughs> and so the next day, I come over, and I'm confident now. You know, I'm, 
man, he gave me the bill. Like it was like next day. oh the next the next day, and I couldn't get a shot off. He was all that footwork, and you know he was just. But that was um, nice. the best runs. I mean, not just in L.A., maybe the best runs in the country were in that bubble. Mm. And you had Reggie, you had Reggie Miller, Jawan Howard, you had a bunch of Dennis Rodman, all the UCLA guys were there. Toby Bailey might have been the biggest celebrity in L.A. that mm. summer. Mm. And um, But, yeah, Jordan, that was that was a fun fun summer right there. And, That's um, dope. Had a had my moment against MJ. I'm talking about I'm talking about giving them business. Like y'all, yeah, like, Ooh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know you modest too, so you you was really probably <laughs> giving them that shit. Yeah. But G's not gonna talk like that. You won the gold in 1996 in the Atlanta Olympics. How was it traveling and being with those guys with that team? Well, let's name that team because that's Shaq, Shaq, Barkley, Penny, Hakeem, Reggie, Pippen, Stockton, all those guys. Yeah, a lot of personality. Shaq, Reggie, GP. Um, Charles, mm -hmm. like it was, it was, but the best part were the practices. And we didn't do much, but we just scrimmage. So I got a chance to go against Scotty every day. And, um, you know, that was, that was crazy. Like Scotty was great, but I got, I got confident playing against Scotty. Mm -hmm. And to me, he was the gold standard mm -hmm. at that point. Um, but it was crazy, man. Like it was, I was there with Shaq when he left to go to LA and they had to, the article in the Sentinel in Orlando. We were in Orlando practicing, and they basically had a survey: should should they pay Shaq or not? I was on the bus with Shaq, and he was in the back, and he was like, "I can't believe that they they don't want me." And I was like, "Man, go out west, go mm -hmm. to L.A., man. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we were trying to get that big one out the east, mm -hmm. you know." Right. And um, but I couldn't believe that they would let Shaq go because he was so dominant at the time. Um, and they really voted not to pay him. They didn't pay. That's, him. That was. I know they didn't pay him, but I'm saying there was a... a there was a... The, the paper did a survey. Right. Should, should they? Should the Magic pay Shaq or not? It was supposed to be the first $100 million deal or something like that, or... And Shaq's big thing was Alonzo got like 110. Okay. And he was like, if Alonzo's a BMW, I'm a Porsche. Mm -hmm. And so if he's getting 110, I should get 125. Mm. And so fans there voted, I don't know, the survey, whatever, mm -hmm. but it was unanimous, no. And, um, and so that was crazy, that. but... Mm. Tough. But just being with those guys, man, it was good. I remember, you know, we went out a couple times. It was a little wild and, you know. <laughs> um, pre-camera phones and pre-camera, so y'all were safe. Yeah, man. I, I, look, I'm, I'm going to just say this. Scotty, I went out with him one night, and uh, we, they threw a party in Orlando. Now, I, I didn't drink at this point. I didn't drink till I met my wife. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> true story. But, um, so I wasn't drinking. And so we went out. We went to a, Scotty's Hammer. You know, he's drinking. We go back to his, uh, his, we go back and play cards all night till about six, seven, play boo ray till like six, seven in the morning. We got practice at 10. I get to practice, I'm, I'm the youngest guy on the team. I have nothing. nothing. Scotty is like, this dude like Been running off. I was like, I don't know how, mm. I don't, but he and MJ, that's, that's how they roll, man. So I, you know, I had a lot to learn. Yeah. Um, but no, it was great. It was, you know, we went a gold medal and play with those guys was, was, was a big thrill. What international players caught your eye around the time? Um, Oscar Schmidt. Oh, he was older oh, at that time, mm -hmm. but, but he was giving me the business. Mm. You know, he was tall. He about 6'9", and could shoot a oh, quick I trigger. I didn't know he was that big. Big dude, and um, so he could play. But, you know, man, look, we, we dominated everybody. I mean, it was no a true story. Did you play against Andrew, Andrew Gaze? Yeah. Australia? I, yeah, I wasn't worried about him. Yeah. He, was, he, was, he was older at that yeah. point. But in the Olympics, true story. <clears throat> Nobody wanted to be the leading scorer because you got drug tested. And, <laughs> and so yep. the only person that got drug tested every game was Carl Malone. It was Carl Malone and whoever the leading scorer was. So we figured it out after a couple games. So at the end of the games, everybody's passing to each other because nobody <laughs> wants to, sh to shoot. Uh, and it looks like we're being like real unselfish, right. but no, nobody wanted to no, score because it took, you know, another hour of yeah. drug testing and all that. So... That's funny. As but uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. I would have dodged that too. How and where did you celebrate your gold medal? You know, that's when Tamia and I started. That's when we kind of met before that. So after the gold medal, I, I got a suite at the Bel Air for five weeks. And that's where we were for five weeks. Mm. She was living in LA. And five weeks before the season, I was in LA at the Bel Air Hotel. Chilling. 
tell her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She so. had you open. <laughs> <laughs> she had him open. No, no, I had her open. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. hey, the book's called Game. Yeah. 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 Ninety six. Your gold medal team or the dream team? Who winning? Yeah, I mean, we had six guys from that original team. We didn't have MJ. You practice? Did you practice with the dream team as a? So in '92, yeah, we yeah, beat them. Yeah, right. We Your beat college them. team beat them. College, right? yeah, Who was on that? You, Webb, me, Webb, Hurley, Penny, Mash, Rodney Shh. Rogers, Rodney Rogers, Montross, Allen Houston. E. So we played them the first game in '92 in La Jolla. Allen hit about 10 threes. Mm. Bobby was getting wherever he wanted. Penny and I were dunking everywhere in transition. Webb was a beast. Mm, like yes. Webb was just killing them dudes. Like mm. to the point where Larry Bird was like, if that's what's coming in the league, I need to get out. Damn. But then the next day, the next two days, they 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 smacked us. We had no, mm-hmm. but um, that to me was a was a great gauge to know that I could play at that level. Mm-hmm. But I like to, you know, look, man, we competitors, man. You always feel like you can right. win, man. Like that, Straight you know. You, like, that's the thing about sports, man. You always feel we had Shaq. What, they, what, what were they gonna do with Shaq? Yeah, Nathan. Penny was like, right? Yeah. People don't realize Penny. and appreciate how good but Penny you, was. You, Penny, and Shaq alone. And so we, you know, we Reggie, Mitch. I mean, we, we, we you know, that we would have held nice. our own. Yeah, definitely. We'd have held our own. Your run from '94 to 2000 was. Unprecedented. Five consecutive All NBA selections, right. 21, 8, and 6 over that span. Did you feel personally, you just said you were a competitor, you felt like you were the best player in the league at that time? Every time I stepped on the floor, probably after like around 96, I felt like I was the best player. Mm. And I think, I don't think that's unusual. I know every time this guy stepped on the court, mm-hmm. you felt like you were the best player. Even if I was, if I, even if I knew I was, you finna see it all on me. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. you, you have, like, to me, like, I went against MJ, like, I'm thinking he, he got to guard me. Yeah, right. so- And um, you have to have that mentality. Mm-hmm. You have to have it. And I think when you're a top, when you're just in the league, you got to, like, even, I mean, Matt, you didn't score mm-hmm. 20, 30 points a game. But then when you're getting out there, you're competing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to feel like I'm going to shut this guy down. I'm going to bust his ass. Like, you have to have that mentality. Mm-hmm. And so I I did. And when I got hurt, and in those four years, I lost that. And y'all never got a chance to really see that, mm-hmm. that player in person. But you go four years of hurt. You know, I know we'll get into it. We get four years of injuries. You start to question yourself. Your abilities, your body's ability to stay healthy, and instead of feeling like I'm the best player, I'm just I'm just happy to be out here, mm. which is a beautiful thing to, to have that appreciation. But I lost that edge. I lost that like, and physically I lost a whole lot as a result as well. So, four years, it just you know you're like, I remember during that time, it was back maybe in '04. I went, I was at Duke and, and Coach K, it was the year I sat out, he was like, who are the top five players in the league? And I was like, Shaq, Kobe, AI, like I'm naming guys. He said, okay, who, who are the next five? And I go, I go through the, I right, give me the next 10. And so I start naming all these guys. And he's like, you named 20 guys, you didn't name yourself. Mm. And so I didn't quite at the time like understand, but like looking back at it, like I, I had, it was so demoralizing, like going through that, that when I came back, it was like, let me just like get in where I could fit in. Mm. And, and, and like I said, I, I enjoyed it. I'm, I was grateful to be able to play, but I lost that, that mentality. That mental yeah. side is that tough. That mental side. Explain, because like I said, it, it happened a while ago. On people, like you really explain your injuries and how bad your ankle situation really got, because I don't think people understand the extent of your injury. And he came back still dunking on people. Barely. I mean, it's a long story. I get into it in the book, but, um, you know, I I got hurt in Detroit. And it, it was a comedy of errors. Like, it, it was just, it, it was mismanaged, the whole thing. And, it, and it, you know, I got hurt. Um, we didn't diagnose it correctly, I think. And um, it was probably a hairline fracture. It got worse and worse until I broke it. And then when I went to Orlando... Oh, see, so that was the season before Orlando, correct? That was my last year in Detroit. Okay. I had surgery 
But the surgery shouldn't have been, it wasn't a big deal. Like, every team was still coming after me. I was healing. When I got to Orlando, I was supposed to be out till December, January. But they brought me back in September. And so there was some miscommunication. I ended up getting what's called a non-union. So the best way to explain that is if, if these two fingers are, are one bone and they break, doctors put the, the bones back together, they put plates in there to hold it, to let it heal. And what happened with me, they healed, but they healed as two separate bones. Mm. That's called a non-union. That becomes a problem. That took three years to heal. Damn. So, and three more surgeries. And so if we had just followed the protocol that was established, then maybe that would have been avoided. Right. Yeah. I can't say that with absolute accuracy, but so that's kind of what happened. Now, the fourth surgery in total, I got septic. I thought I almost died. I had a hole in my ankle from a staph infection. You've seen the ankle, it's mm -hmm. nasty. The doctor said if the, if the skin, the free flap surgery, they took skin from my arm and it sort of used it as a patch over my ankle, if it didn't take, they would have had to amputate the leg. And so... Not the ankle, the leg. Yeah, like the lower mm -hmm. part of your leg. What? And so... We didn't have social media. We didn't have our, the mm -hmm. ability now to tell what mm -hmm. was going on. So I think a lot of people didn't know. How and big I, it was, right? How serious it was. And uh, so I go, I I go through all of that in the book. It was four or five years of just craziness. But So that's why you lose that. Right. You know what I'm saying? You just like, man, I almost died. Like At one point, I didn't want to come back. But you just like, man, I'm just, I'm just happy to be what age, here. What age are you, not to cut you off, what age are you at that time? 2000, I'm 27. Damn, right in your prime. And you know what's crazy, man? Like, writing this book, like, going through it all, and I talked to you earlier about, like, you got to stay in the moment. Like, you can't. I didn't deal with, with all of the baggage, mentally, emotionally. I was just trying to fight to keep playing. Right. Getting into the Hall of Fame, in that moment, you, you reflect, you reflect writing your story. I dealt with it then. Mm, all and so, yeah, like a lot of that, like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of that. That's it heavy. Was, it was, it was mm -hmm. dark. Right. Even the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame should be like the, you know, the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. The ultimate, regardless of what happened or didn't happen, it validates you. Right. And I was mad. Yeah. I was bitter because I'm thinking, Y'all only got six years. Yeah. Y'all didn't get, I, I didn't get a chance to see this all yeah. the way through. Right, yeah. And so I didn't, he, I didn't deal with that until after yeah. my career. Because nah. you, I'm fighting, man. I'm, I'm just trying to stay on the court. Yeah. You can't, you're not going to really look back at the good right. and the bad while you're in the midst of it. I say this because you're our big brother. Like, you're the biggest what if ever. Like, we all look like mm -hmm. you were the next prototype. You, they, they were fitting you to be the next MJ because that's how talented you were. You know what I mean? And it's just like to hear you kind of explain your story on what you went through. Like, you were robbed, we were robbed. Like, you were yeah. going where no one has really right. been for your size, your position, and what you brought to the game. So I always wanted to know. Like, obviously, we're cool, and I've known you for years. You're my big brother, but we've never got that in-depth. Right. Like, I couldn't imagine. Like you said, you finally unloaded that baggage 20-plus years later. Yeah. Because, like, you were on pace to be one of the, if not, you know, who knows, one of the greatest players of all time. And to have injury derail that, like, it's just, I, I, I always, that's why I'm definitely going to read this, but just to, as, fuck the basketball side, the mental side had to right. be not only on the court, but off the court in your personal life and all, it just weighed on you. It did, it did. And, you know, everybody's got something and everybody goes through something. And sometimes, and I don't want to equate this because there's people who have far more traumatic things in their life, but sometimes we, we suppress that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you suppress it to survive. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but ultimately you get through it by acknowledging it and dealing with it. And so I, I never unpacked it. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize, I didn't realize how much it impacted me. Yeah, man. And like, I didn't think that like, because I used to say to myself like, Coming back from the injury, playing nine more years, that's far greater than anything I did prior. Because I know what I went through. Right. But I don't think I really unpacked like, like how, 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 how hard that was for me mm. and how difficult that was to go through that. And, um, you know, genetics, hard work, whatever. But like I had a chance 
you know, you have a chance to leave a legacy. Right. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I think I did. I mean, I had a great career, but I had a chance to be really, really special. And it's interesting, man. Like, I, I, I'm being honest here. Like, when the NBA 75 came out. Yes, thank you. No, no, hey, we go. We've been arguing. So, yeah. T-Mac, you know, Vince. I mean, Dwight. there's a bunch of Dwight. Come on, Dwight should be on there, man. Like, <laughs> Kyrie, but I mean, you. you. No, no, no. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of like, and maybe this is a way to like protect myself. But I was like, you know what? I get it. I, 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 I got mm -hmm. hurt. You know, I didn't have, I didn't see it all the way through. The, the, the Hall of Fame is college and NBA. So my college helped get me in. So my body of work wasn't enough. So I, I, I kind of justified it, bro. But let me, let me just tell you, I'm being honest. Mm, so yeah. I'm at the, at the All Star Game in Cleveland, and I'm working that night. I'm working the, the. the pre-game, the, 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 the post-game, and all that goes on. And it hit me then. Mm. And, and that was, I, got, I, got, I was emotional. And it was, it, I was surprised I was emotional. You know, you're trying to protect, you're not trying to show mm -hmm. it, but you're feeling like, like, fuck, I should be out there. Mm -hmm. And I remember 25 years ago, I was in that building for the 50th, and it was All-Star Weekend. And I said, you know what? If they ever do this again, I'm gonna be I'm on that be next on team. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, and no disrespect to these guys, because they deserving to be on it. I'm fans of theirs. They're brothers of mine. I love them to death. But when I saw people like, you know, guys from my era like Ray and Reggie, and I used to be like, man, I used to get them to business. <laughs> like, I, I, that's what I was thinking. Right. And so I had, you know, and, I, and, I, and they're deserving. So I'm not right. trying to. Yeah. So that, it like, it hit me. And so, like, mm. there's still baggage. Like, there's still, man. you know what I'm saying? And so, but it kind of triggered me a little bit. But, you know, I mean, look, I mean. You're better than Danny Shays, bro. I'm sorry. Man, well, you said it Dolph Shays, excuse me. Dolph Shays. You're better than Dolph Shays. Hey, let me let, hey, hey, I, I want to say I'm something. I'm sorry. I want to say something. I was nicer than Dolph Shays. <laughs> look, you got to give him respect for his time. But look, I want to say something about y'all, man, because I know y'all interviewing me. But I played, first of all, I remember Matt. I watched you play during the lockout at UCLA. And I remember hearing you a football player. And then fast forward. I think it was 07. Y'all had y'all run at mm -hmm. Golden State. And I'm like, who is this light skinned crazy motherfucker out here? <laughs> he ran Pedro, across the court and Pedro. checked Devin Hare or somebody. Uh -huh. and, and I was like, yo, this dude is crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but then I played with you, and and, and people get to see the, you know, different mm -hmm. sides of you guys now. But the thing that that showed me a lot about you was when our teammate Barbosa and his mother passed. Mm -hmm. And your mom had, Just unfortunately, mm -hmm. from cancer, and I, I'm not trying to bring yeah. it up, but no. like, and I know that was hard for you, but to see you there for him, and he's crying, he's going through it, and like, I didn't know how to be right. supportive, because mm -hmm. I hadn't really gone through it, but I was like, yo, this dude, like Matt, like all that other stuff, <laughs> and all the stuff that you've gone through, I played with you with the Clippers, you come into the aid of a teammate, Mm -hmm. Always. Every all your time. stuff, Always. all your smoke, mm -hmm. it was defense. Of you're my defending right? a teammate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this dude right here, the yeah. same thing in the palace. Mm -hmm. You come into the, to the aid the of a teammate. Long time I've been in trouble. Yeah. Come into the aid of a teammate. Everybody, I didn't play with, with you, uh, Stack, but everybody that's played with you that I know thinks the world of you. And so I was like, like as teammates, and guys, like, I, I could be in the trenches with these two mm -hmm. right easy, here. Easy, easy. I was with Matt. Um, I didn't, you know, I played one, he was a little messed up in Phoenix, but in L.A., I, I didn't play, I watched. Can you imagine that, that real quick in the Phoenix shit? They fired Terry Porter at All-Star break. That was our coach. <laughs> First of all, I'm going, I'm, so I'm going to come out of the We Believe season. You know, Nelly, mad I don't sign a three-year deal, so he gets rid of me. I'm going to there, and G's there, and I'm tell, I tell them, remember, I, yo, yo, it's an honor. You're my favorite player. I don't know if I made him feel old at the time, but I'm going to fucking I, I play with... I tell him that during the game. I'm going to play with hey, Grant Hill, so let me bro. Take, let me, uh, first of all, first of all, it was a crazy year, and they fired him. And, and yeah, we had too much talent, man. Too that much. Was that. We had yeah, so remember, much. We should have been... Stack, I mean, remember Stat Cock. Stat Omar, Cox. Superhero. That, <laughs> Jay Rick, like, we had, we had yeah, so we much talent. bro. But the crazy thing was um, with this dude right here, I don't know if you remember this, but we played, we played in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And I think after the whole thing in the past, that was 04, 05. Yep. And then 06, I, got, I had a sports hernia. So I don't, I don't know if we played against each other mm -hmm. until 06, 07. And we're in Orlando 
and I'm guarding him. And we're right on the sidelines. And somebody yells something slick out to you about, you know, to, I turned around and cursed him out. Yeah, G. And I, you, you remember that? I remember that. I cursed him out. I and I, I, I didn't know how he, I didn't, we didn't know each other. Yeah, yeah. But, because I'm there, I got to guard this dude. And I don't need, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? But Tell like, me, yeah. but I, 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 and so, and then we played the, the next year, I think, at Golden State. You was in Phoenix. And, uh, man, y'all ran up and down the court. Like that on. year, mm -hmm. I was like, I mean, we Basketball guarded. was fun. Mm -hmm. It was fun, but like I always said, he was mm -hmm. top three, four guys I had to go. I could never figure him yeah, out. Yeah, Jack. I couldn't figure Jack out. I studied him. No, but I couldn't. But I couldn't <laughs> nah, nah, but you had a different game. You could shoot it. You played with it. You couldn't speed you up. You shot it, you know, behind your head. And I was, I could not, I could guard. I had a, you know, you couldn't guard guys, but... You had a playbook for guys. Like, okay, I'm a, you know, LeBron, I'm gonna try to do this, or Melo, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't do anything with Kobe. Like, I, I mean, I, Nobody. You know, I mean, I couldn't, you know, <laughs> I'm out there with one leg, and they got me out here, 38, trying to guard Kobe. I'm looking at Matt like, can you, you believe hey, it? You, hey, you was getting after it though. Yeah, you was getting after it. Definitely. I mean, but, but, but I could, it was, I couldn't figure you out, man. I, I Pierce, like, I could, I had a game plan for, and I actually did well against these guys, but I. People don't appreciate how good you were. Mm -hmm. I think those that appreciate know it. get a bucket. Those sure. that know know. Get a bucket. I've always yeah. told you that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. always same. I want to backtrack a little bit. So you go to Orlando. This is you, T Mac, <sighs> and a possibility of getting Tim Duncan at the time. Walk us through this. So you're going through injury and, and and trying to get back on the court. You're teaming mm -hmm. up with a young T Mac, uh, and then there's whispers or rumors that you could possibly get Tim. So what happened was Tim and I went, we had the same agent. So we went down together. And Tim, I think, was more in at the time than I was. Mm. I was still, you know, I, I had New York. I had a couple other teams I was looking at. But Tim wanted to be in Orlando if he were to leave. And so we were down there, and they were hosting us. And, and um, they had just had a pretty good season. Doc Rivers, first year coaching. They were, I think they were 500. And so while we were there, like, everything was going well. Like, it just felt like, yo, this, this, this could happen. And, and I, I know it's hard for people now to think of Tim Duncan anywhere else. Right. He was after his third year. I think he won a championship in San Antonio. And I'm telling you, man, I remember it like it was yesterday. We're at dinner. And Tim's girlfriend asked Doc a question. Can wives and girlfriends Ooh. travel on the team playing? Yep, I, I remember that. And... You got to understand, back then, that, that didn't happen. Mm -mm. It, it, it happens now, but back then it didn't happen. It, and so Doc said, no, it's a business trip. That doesn't happen. I don't allow that. Now, I didn't know that San Antonio Did had it. started doing that. Yes. You know, and so that's why, because I'm thinking, that's a bold question. Like, I'm like, why is she asking that question? And so, but I didn't pay much attention to it. So we got back to the hotel that night. <laughs> and it was funny because to me and I, we we're in the hotel, almost like the hotel room was bugged. So we're whispering to each other, like, you know, and she's like, he ain't coming. Mm. I said, what do you mean? She's like, when she asked that question, her whole body language changed mm -hmm. with that response. And I was like, nah, 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 whatever. So anyway, we get back, we get back to uh, Detroit. It's a funny story. So it was too much. I'm on crutches. So I ended up saying, you know what, have the teams come visit me in Detroit. So New York comes in and they bring... They bring Star Jones. They bring, like, all these actors and actresses in. They got this tape they play. They got, like, Seinfeld and Brooke Shields and <laughs> all these people. Like, come, you know, you think, you look, Orlando's night. Wait, wait till you come to New York. Like, and, and I always wanted to play in New York. So Leon, you know, the actor Leon. Yeah, I talk to him all the time. So I ask him about this. So he's on the video. He's like, gee, you think the women are nice in Detroit. Wait till you come to New York. And so to me, it was like, oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> Turn that tape off. Turn that tape off. <laughs> and so and to this day, we talk. She's like, man, you think that New York would have watched the tape? Mm. And so anyway, you know, New York didn't happen. But um, and, and, and by then, I was probably going to Orlando. But so then T-Mac, like, they, but there was a chance as Tim was trying to figure it out, T-Mac, you know, he's from down there. So it just, it was coming together that like all three of us might play together. And I didn't mm. know how good T-Mac was mm. at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know, I didn't know until he got to Orlando. I was like, oh my God, this guy right here Prime. is, is uh, incredible. So not being able to be healthy to play with Mac is something that mm. we talk, he and I talk about all the time. 
Mm. Just like wishing that we could have. Could have been. Could have. Could have done it. T Mac and G. Despite all the injuries, you know how me and Matt feel about you. Right. A lot it's of mutual. people. A lot of people feel the same way about you. And even though the injuries, you still had a Kobe S career in our minds. The way we look at you. Right. How when you go back and look when you go back and look at all that, what's your thoughts? Like how how grateful are you, are you, you know, to make it through all that, the injury, and still be able to come back and finish on a good note? Yeah, now that that was special. I mean, it was a good thing. You know, on one hand, I didn't appreciate how good I was, and that sounds arrogant, but I didn't appreciate how good I was in Detroit because we weren't winning, and so. The one thing I learned from this process of writing the book is when we have success, we got to celebrate that. Right. There's a story, I, um, 2000 All-Star Game. So 99, we had a lockout, so we didn't have an All-Star Game. 2000, San Francisco, we're, we're there, we play, or I guess in Oakland, the old Oracle Arena. <laughs> such, a, such a stupid story. So I, I'm thinking, okay, Jordan's gone. Because in the All-Star game with Joe, we had to defer to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just, no one said it, but you just felt like. Right. Unspoken rule. You just got to get the ball. Especially in 98 when Kobe was there and like they're going, you Wanna know, the whole thing. We had it? to like, which I got issues with the whole, um, the documentary. Uh, it was a great documentary, but it made it seem like I was scared. Like we were on the bench. And what happened was in that game, Penny was hurt that year. He sat out the whole year, came back for two games, played an all-star game. He had GP Gardner. It was, it was uh, Kobe and MJ. And then people forget, Garnett was a three mm -hmm. early in his Good career. Time. So Garnett and I are matched up. So Penny didn't want to handle the ball because he's not healthy and he's got to go against GP. So I'm bringing the ball up. I mean, I was point forward. So I'm always back in transition. We're farting around. It's, it's three on one. GP got Kobe and Garnett. He's throwing lobs. I'm back. So I'm not trying to be in the frame <laughs> on these alley oops. So I, in the timeout, I'm like, y'all, y'all got to get back. Because I'm out here on the island, man. What do you do with these young boys? You know, and so the way it looked, it looked like I was like scared of Kobe. I mean, I had great respect for Kobe, but I wasn't, I wasn't scared of him then. Right. <laughs> you know, so 2000 All Star. So, you know, the, the trainers always would carry your, uh, I had contacts then. So my trainer, Mike Abdenauer in Detroit, would always keep contacts. Mm -hmm. So if I ran out, I would just go get some from him. So I only had one pair of contacts. And the day of the game, my one contact ripped. And so I'm like, do I play with no contacts? So I put one in. And now I'm all screwed up during the game. <laughs> I threw a lob to Vince. I, I promise you, I threw it over the backboard. Yeah. Like even, like, and so, you know, and I remember some, I told Chip England, who's, you know, you know mm -hmm. Chip from uh, San Antonio. I told Chip, I said, ah, oh, man, there's always next year. Like, I'll, I'll wear, you know, next year. And so next year didn't happen. Mm -hmm. and, and so I say all that to say that you got to celebrate when we have success. And life's not guaranteed, and we got to celebrate mm -hmm. each other and celebrate yeah. yourself. I didn't do that when I was in Detroit because, to me, I was chasing Isaiah. And until we won... I didn't give myself permission to, to celebrate. celebrate. Mm, and deep. so being able to go back now and like, you know what? I actually was all right. Because mm. I don't, here's the thing. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. I remember trying to guard Kobe at 38 with a bad mm -hmm. wheel. Mm -hmm. I remember like standing in the corner waiting for the ball to come to me. Like that's what I remember. I, don't rem I didn't remember those, 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 those years. And so the exercise of not just the dark, but also the, the, the light, the good, right. the positive, and, and just appreciating that, as you said. Mm -hmm. A lot of people remember them full-speed crossovers. <laughs> Trust <Right>? me. <laughs> For real. <laughs> full-speed coming at you with the crossover. Pippen, I remember, I remember when he got Pippen and banged on him. Pippen was too light, man. He was like 215, man. I could just... Mm. You came you know, right at it. Where we got? 220, 230? 230. 230. Yeah, so. For all you young people, Google him. Nah. Google him. What was the 2010 playoff experience like with Steve Nash? That, the, that was the Western Finals run, right? Yeah. You, you played. I was no, going. You, I was you in was in, You in Orlando. Oh, yeah. 2010. 2010. Yeah. You, were yeah. you in Orlando? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had a good year. You know, it was weird because we had as great as Shaq was and as great as Steve were. They didn't really mix. And um, so when Shaq left and Amari was healthy, 
and then Alvin Gentry was coaching us. We we had a really good season. We were third seed, and uh, we beat Portland, we beat San Antonio, and then we faced LA. They got us the first two games in LA. We beat them the first, the next two games, and then Game Five, man, like we're right there on the ropes. Jay Rich banks in a three to tie it in overtime. Kobe gets a ball, to a three pointer. The one time he missed, <laughs> the one time he missed a shot on me, like in that situation, uh, he airballed it. I'm right in his, like I'm right there in his face. He airballs it, but Meta World Peace gets the rebound. Jay Rich didn't box him out. He, he tip in, and he he he. They win Game Five, and I don't know if emotionally we recovered. Yeah. And then Kobe in Game Six, I, I mean, he started, cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. dude. In his like, bag. and so here's the thing, man. So he, you know, he's doing, he's doing this, and he always look with Kobe, like, like with LeBron. Like when I guarded LeBron back then, my attitude was, I'm not gonna crash the offensive glass. When we shoot, I'm gonna find him. I'm not gonna let him get out full in the open court with full head of steam. So I'm not gonna let him turn the corner and go right and get to the rim. I'm gonna make him make contested jump shots, mm-hmm. and I'm not gonna foul. If he posts me up, don't help, because he beat you with his passing as much as. So, like, you know, he had a game plan. And I actually did okay. I mean, LeBron would have moments, but, like, you know, I didn't have a strategy for Kobe. Like, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and so sometimes, man, like, I would just, he'd go up and shot. I would just hit his arm. Like, just hit his yeah. arm and just, like, you know. And the problem, too, was I, I couldn't go back at him. Because mm-hmm. my role, you know, in, in Phoenix, Nash had the ball in his hand, so I'm stuck in the corner. And, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a spot-up shooter. Um... So he was hard to defend. But in that moment, man, like, I, I mean, a couple times, I guess right. Like, I'm like, like he's going to go right. He's going to shot fake. I'm not, you know, like, I know what he's going to do. And I'm like, and then, you know, you know how hard so it you're is. you're saying this, and you're, when you're squared off against him, you're saying that in your head as you're, de- uh, as you're defending I knew, him? I knew he wanted to go right. Mm-hmm. And I knew he had a great ball fake. Mm-hmm. And I, I've seen him do it before. And so he Too many that times. one shot right in front of our bench mm-hmm. where he tapped Alvin on the and so he hit a tough shot on me before that. And I tried to deny him the ball, but he gets it. He goes right. I go with him. He shot fakes. I don't go for it. I actually, I get closer into him. I go up when he goes up. You know how hard it is to do a shot fake, reload from three? And somebody in your grip. And I'm, I'm, I, I couldn't be any closer to him without fouling him. Man, this dude hits mm. Like, I was like, I mean... <laughs> I, 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 I was actually proud of the defense I played. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking, oh, like, I couldn't have done anything other than just prevent him from getting the ball, but he was the best player I played against. Oh. And, and, and I say this respectfully with Jordan. I didn't guard Jordan. Pippen mm. and I matched up. Yeah. But the, the best player that I, I played against, hands down, was Kobe. Mm. And one of my regrets, it's in the book, in 07, when I left Orlando, Phil Jackson called me three supposed times. Supposed to get traded for him, right? No, no. Well, that was that was in Detroit. I, I, oh, I don't that know was how later. True that. I don't know how oh, true okay. that was. I've heard that, but I don't know okay. how true that was. But when I left Orlando, Phil called me three times. I didn't call him back. Wow. And I'm thinking, oh, it's it's over in L.A. Kobe, you know, he's talking about buying them, and you know, they, you know, they're imploding in the playoffs, and all. Like, I, I just thought the run was over in L.A., and I end up going to Phoenix in part to stay healthy. But I think Phil would have played me more, more suited for my mm-hmm. game. He liked tall guys that could yep. handle. And I think he wanted me to come in and kind of be a primary ball handler or whatever. Me sitting in the corner was not that my game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I played it. I did my role. But, like, that wasn't who I was. And so I think now, like, man, if I had just, that would have been interesting. We were number one in the West but then they traded for Gasol mm-hmm. and then later that, that season, and that was a game changer for, um, for the Lakers. And they, you know, you went on and Rest had a great history. run. Yeah. Play with some, some great teammates. Anyone, uh, who's your favorite teammate during your career? Damn, man, 19 years, man. Yeah, that's, you, that's, that's, uh, you had a hell of a run. I think in Detroit, Lindsey, Allen, those are my guys. We came in together, you know, and, in Orlando, it's tough because I didn't play a whole lot in Orlando. Mm-hmm. Jameer um, was oh, good people. Young Jameer. You know, actually, it's crazy. You know, you know who bonded, who and I bonded a lot because we were rehabbing all the damn time was Pat Garrity. Pat mm-hmm. Garrity. We, 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 like, we were hurt 
two years, so we spent a lot of time together. Pat Garrett had a winner. Um, mm-hmm. I will, you know, I, I enjoyed playing. I mean, we didn't hang out. We didn't, you know, I didn't partake. Uh, <laughs> but I, I enjoyed Matt, man. Like, Matt was, I'm telling you, he yeah. was, like, just in terms of teammates doing whatever is needed. Yeah, the ultimate teammate. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't get enough credit for that or give you enough credit for that. But, like, you should have started in L.A. with the Clippers that year. You know, but mm-hmm. you came off the bench. You never, you never made a. Mm-mm. I remember seeing, I remember seeing you at the facility. Like you didn't have. I don't think you you had a. a it was like late too. Might have been like August September, and you were unsure Mm-mm. where you were gonna yeah. sign. Mm-hmm. And you were in there just playing pickup ball every day. And then you playing so well, they brought you in. But like, just like whatever's needed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Didn't complain. Just did what he had to do. If something popped off. He, he, he was always in it. Like he was there for your teammate. Like and so, but there's so many, man. I mean, you know, Nash was fun to play with. Barbosa was a good guy. Those mm-hmm. Phoenix years were fun. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I had a favorite, but you know, Shaq Probably was good. fun. Man. Shaq was crazy. Remember the Shaq and Lou Amundsen back and forth? Remember when Shaq took his mouthpiece and put it in his uh tights during shoot around? I was just talking with Shaq about that last night, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we talked about it on the Shaq show. Shaq is the craziest nasty teammate. Motherfucker, nasty. Man. Oh. Man, hey man, Shaq. <laughs> I mean, there's so many stories, man. With naked, Shaq, tackling man. people. He uh, riding he on his naked bike, all the time. butt naked. Remember riding on Lou's bike, butt naked. I'm an out Shaq right here, but I remember one time we. This is so bad, man. This. <laughs> 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 I remember one time, man, Shaq. <laughs> this is so bad, man. I, I, don't even, I can't repeat this, man. <laughs> Come on, you already started. <laughs> all right. Man, we you know we're in the showers after practice, and he goes to Jay Rich. Jay Rich, you got a fat ass, man. And so, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Shaq was I'm a like, old kid, dog. I'm like, how do you come back? Like, how like what does Jay Rich do, man? Like, oh my like, goodness. You know what I'm saying? Shaq was just, he was funny. <laughs> Shaq is he funny. Was nasty, yeah. He was nasty. He was crazy. Big old kid. He uh. And we had poor Terry Porter, man. He had, uh, no, he chance. had no chance. Remember we used to say to Bill Cartwright, I averaged 50. I just, what a, yeah. what a, what a, he used to break his stats down oh, yeah, against no, Bill Cartwright. That. So Terry Porter, we're in film session. And uh, we're watching film in the film room. And, and he stopped film and said, Shaq, like, don't you think you could come over from the weak side and maybe block the shot right here? And Shaq would be like, TP, I'm top five all time in the NBA in shot blocks. I think I know when I can block a shot. <laughs> yeah. And like, like just, just like the disrespect, the craziness. But so calm though. But so calm about oh. a couple times he show up late. Oh, this is bad too, but he show up late for practice. And nobody, it was It's just Shaq. It was Shaq, it's but he okay. showed up late and like, coach, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> the passport truck t- tipped over on 51, man. There were Mexicans everywhere. <laughs> That's why I'm late to practice. Like he was just <laughs> like he was saying things, man. It was, it was constant <laughs> humor, man. And <laughs> and uh, he just kept it light. Shaq he was crazy. fun. Yeah. He was crazy. We didn't make the playoffs, but you know he was in the time. I-, I can't believe I told those stories, man. No, but Shaq Shaq was, Shaq every day, was every day, it was something. I'm not with surprised. Shaq. Every when day. When Bill Cartwright used to coach the bigs, Bill, I averaged so and so and so and so and so will go against you in this game and my career number from high school to college yeah. and the pros. He would break all the oh, yeah, shit Gio, down. I'm seventy percent lifetime from the field. Give me the damn ball. Middle just school, high wh- school. <laughs> right. yeah. Shaq, he said, I can't listen to Carr, right? I averaged 30 and 10 against him. Like, I mean, he just, Facts. just unbelievable. Shaq, man, bro. he was, he was unbelievable. He was and funny, Bill Carr, just like, ah, he was, man, Shaq. I mumble under his breath. Shaq was funny. Fast forward, co owner with the Hawks. Uh, how did you happen to uh, land that spot? Congratulations, by the way. Appreciate that. When we were in LA, I wasn't playing, I was hurt. Um, matter of fact, it was that December. When when, when you guys, when we were undefeated, we had a great month. I had, I figured I was in LA, my family was in Phoenix. So once a month, I would have dinner with this Duke alum, a guy named Bruce Karsh. And Bruce actually is one of the partners with the Warriors. Okay. And uh, he's a Duke grad. So we were talking about the Clippers. And I was like, you know, I think they might, they might be in play. Uh, they may, I'm hearing they may have to sell the team for estate tax reasons. So we kind of concocted this whole sk- this this plan that we knew Adam was going to be commissioner the next year. All three of us do grads. Let's meet with Adam and see if we can get in through the, you know maybe buy a piece of the team with the chance to buy it all later down the road. 
And then the next year, everything implodes. Mm -hmm. And so Bruce brought in a guy, Tony Wrestler, because he knew now it was going to be an open auction when the team was for sale. And uh, we bid $1.2 billion. And um, funny story. So I'm in New York <clears throat> with Bruce Karsh. Tony's in LA. We're all on speakerphone. And we're on the phone. They're going to get mad that I told this story. But we're on the phone and we're like, okay, $1.2 billion is going to be our deal. That's, a, that's for the Clippers? That's to buy the Clippers. Okay. Which we were outbid by $800 million, Steve Ballmer. But we're on the phone. They're like, all right. So Tony says, I'll put in half a billion. Mm. And then Bruce says, I'll put in half a billion. And then they look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so I swear, I said, I got five on it. Like, you know, just, to, you know, I was being funny. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I told them my amount, and they just wanted to know that I, that, that I was going to put something in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you have to put something in. So, but that didn't work. Um, the Hawks came up right after. Similar circumstances, some racial overtones, some emails so on and so forth. And um, I ended up getting Tony and convinced him on Atlanta. You know, I think the perception of Atlanta historically, the franchise was just... Way off. Yeah, it just wasn't good. You, you played there, so it was... And so I felt like, for me, my selling point was, we got a chance to come in and have value. You got a great city, international airport, quality of life. Uh, guys like to be in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They Cost live there of in living. Austin. Cost of living's low. Yes. You know what I'm saying? All of that. We got a chance to come in and change that narrative and build an emotional connection with the franchise. If you're from Boston and you're a basketball fan, there's a 99% chance you're a Celtics fan. Mm -hmm. But if you're from Atlanta, you might be a Bulls fan. You yeah. might be it's so transient. People aren't really from there. So, you know, we came in and, you know, redo the arena, the practice facility, you know, try to create an atmosphere, try to understand Atlanta, embrace what Atlanta is. The previous ownership group thought it was too too much diversity. Mm, too and black. I, you could say, I'll say it for too you. Too black. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we've tried to embrace who we are. I love when you go to a game in Atlanta, you got people from all walks of life, you know, different political, different ethnicities, different gender orientation, all there supporting the team. But we're building that. You know, we're, we're trying to build it. And Trey Young having a young star mm -hmm. uh, is helpful, but... Um, but yeah, so you know, we're, we're changing that. We, we, I don't know if you've been to a game in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I know, I know you have. Well, Y'all see me there? I'll be in your seat. You be, you <laughs> be in his seats. He be but giving it's a party, seats. man. Like, yeah, man, it's, it's a party at our game. We got concerts. We got two chains as a partner with the G League Super, team. The food is unbelievable. The food, we got sweets. We, we got amenities. We're, we're trying to create an environment there. Barbershop. And, uh, we got a killer mic, got a barbershop. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you the genius of that. It's dead space that you could not sell. Yeah. And so we said, let's make it a barbershop. We got a DJ in there. Swag you, it's, shop. There's a whole energy in there, a whole vibe. And so just embracing Atlanta. We try mm -hmm. to reflect Atlanta and all that we do. And we got a lot more work to do, but excited about the progress we've made. Man, coming down the home stretch, post-career, you've been very successful. What are some other things you're into um, outside of ownership of the, at Hawks? Yeah, I got a lot on my plate, man. Maybe a little too much, but <laughs> I'm, no on such the, thing. I'm on the board of Campbell's suit. So we... You know, in our portfolio, we have everything from Cape Cod chips, kettle chips, um, obviously Campbell soup, chunk, chunky soup. I'm on the board of um, Empire State Realty Trust. We own the Empire State Building. We'd love to have you guys come do a show. Oh, that'd be dope. Empire State Building. I, I'll personally host you a day. Y'all hear that? We're Down the road, we can yeah. make that happen. We got it. It's on me. Um, yeah, we dope. make that happen. We'd be honored. Um, I heard that. I, um, Managing director of USA Basketball, so I'll be picking okay. the Olympic team. Um, oh, that's fine. That's and you dope. know, Steve Kerr is our head coach for the yeah. next next cycle. What else am I doing? Um, I'm on the board of Duke. Um, shoes coming back out. Shoes coming back out. Matter of fact, he's he lacing us. This is a partnership right here with Tupac, Tupac. Estate. And oh, is so it really? It's a partnership. These will be coming out. Um, he wore these the GH2s. Butter room. On the, um, no, nah, on nah, the, All Eyes on Me. All yeah, I was about to album, see it was on a, with the outfit. Yeah, and so, so that really helped with the shoe. But yeah, just, you know, keeping it busy, man. We're re rebuilding downtown Atlanta. We're pouring $4 billion into downtown Atlanta. Looking good, too. And, and so uh, trying to do like an L.A. Live kind of mm -hmm. in downtown Atlanta. So just staying busy, man. You know, doing TV as well. Trying to be Love like y'all. Love mm -hmm. it. Is it true Anita Baker introduced you and Tamia? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, kind of. So, so Isaiah has his jersey retired. 
And um, Anita Baker sings the national anthem at the Jersey at the game. So afterwards, there was, was a reception. I meet Anita Baker. So she and her husband, so she's like, you know, so I know you got a girl. I know you like breaking all the hearts and all this. And I mean, I'm just like, yeah, I can't find, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. I wasn't really struggling. I was like, I'm struggling. You got to hook me up. <laughs> you know, this, really, that, the yeah, other, yeah. you know. And so, so the next week, she was at the Soul Train Awards and she met Tamia. And Tamia was, you know, from Windsor, which is right across the river from Detroit. Big fan of Anita. So she was telling her this. And he was like, I got just the guy mm. for you. So she kind of, she planted the seed. I ended up connecting with Tamia, you know, a couple months later. But, yeah, you know, it's a good story to say Anita hooked us yeah. up. And it, it, yeah. It's partially yeah. true. Yeah, it's partially true. It. You bring uh, me joy. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> your oldest daughter is in MMA as a father. What is that like, watching your daughter punch people in the face and get punched in the face? Dude, I don't understand. It's, it's crazy. crazy. You, you have girls. You have, girl. you, you have two boys, but yeah. three boys, excuse three boys, me. Yeah. Um, so she, you know, she started doing jujitsu. And as a parent, you think, okay, girl, young lady, getting to go off to college, learn self-defense, that's a good thing. <laughs> but that just kept going. Kept going. And so right before COVID, she's like, Dad, I think I want to fight. So I got a buddy who's a general counsel at UFC. So I took her to a fight. And we're sitting up close. I'm thinking, you know, she sees up close. She won't want to do it. I'm, you know. So we get there, it's in North Carolina, we go to the fight, we fly home that night, we get in at 2 a.m. I'm like, Mila, what do you think? She's like, Dad, I could be a champion. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it backfired, like my plan didn't work. But she kept going and, and she fought last, she fought last October. And I mean, she's passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And you know, like if somebody, if your parents tried to tell you, you couldn't play basketball. Yeah, you're gonna like, do it anyway. Yeah, you gotta support you your gotta kids, support whatever it. they wanna do. So let me tell you, so to me and I, so she goes to the fight, she goes early. We drive from Orlando to Lakeland, Florida, about an hour drive. We don't say a word in the car. There's no music, no, nothing on the radio. We're not saying that, like, we're, we're, there's a nervous mm -hmm. energy. We get to the fight, there's a bar. Man, we probably each had about Eight rum and coke. Oh, I know, right? Like you had, like you just had to. <laughs> had so to the edge. By the time she came on, she comes out. Her her uh, her walkout music was Rick Rocks. Rick Y'all feeling good? The devil was the devil is a lie. So she comes out. I'm like, all right, all right you know. But we're we're like now we're like. This your first time actually seeing it? First time seeing it. Yeah. So she gets in the ring. She goes in first. The young lady she's fighting, who's fought before, who looks like she's been in some fights, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we're a little nervous about, but like she gets. She comes with studs in her ears, and that's a no-no. So they can't get them out. And so they're going through all this. They're trying to get them out. It's been 10 minutes. So now we're kind of mad. It's the tactic. That they're, yeah, that they're stalling. So now to me, and I won't repeat what Tamir was saying, but <laughs> it's what they say in Memphis a lot. <laughs> and, so, um, and so anyway, she gets in the ring. She chokes her out with 50, 50 seconds. Wow. And, uh, you know, so she's into it, man, and, you know, what do you do, man? You know, but she was flying, quit flying. Mm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but she and she and she and you, you knew. I mean, she's quiet, sweet, kind, like the last person you would think. But dude, she goes six days a week. She teaches it. She loves it. She's a brown belt. Like she's, she wants to fight. She wants to try to go for it. She wants to open up gyms down the road. So she's got a plan, and you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. That's dope. You were always forward thinking in basketball uh, so much that you didn't have an agent. What did that, where did that idea come from and you were able to be successful? I realized early on that the NBA is a global marketing and public relations firm that's disguised as a league. We went to China. Remember we went to China? Mm -hmm. And we were over there and people knew who we were. We go places, recognize us, and that's because that's what the NBA does. And so I felt like I needed an attorney who could negotiate my contracts. But all the marketing opportunities, that was coming from the league. That was coming from different, you know, because the league's pushing mm -hmm. young players. And I was delivering early on. So why am I going to pay somebody 10, 20%? Mm. And then why am I going to let them own that relationship mm -hmm. and leverage it? I want to sit with, with Coca-Cola and Sprite. I want to sit with Nestle. I want to sit with and talk about marketing plans, sit with the ad agency. Uh, a lot of times agents might leverage that, 
you know, for another client. Right, scratch their back. And so, yeah. you know, I got hurt. All that momentum kind of went away, but it was invaluable experience, like having an office, having employees, doing evaluations, raises, um, sitting in, in meetings, talking about strategy. Like, I'm doing all this while I'm playing. And it just helped, you know, helped me think about and learn about other things. So, you know, it was fun, and, and I had a good time, and... Um, you know, maybe if I had the muscle of a big time marketing firm, maybe things would have been a little different. But I had a you lot did of pretty deals. Well. I had a lot of deals. Real quick, uh, before we get to quick hitters, um, the Sprite I situation. Gonna, I thought you were gonna ask about uh, the huh. night Biggie. Oh shit! Yeah, because you I remember you asked me about that in L. A. Yeah, and I, put, I talk about it in the book. So yeah, the night the the, the night Biggie passed. Yeah, talk to us about that. Damn, I totally forgot about that. We yeah. just had we just had the photographer that. Go ahead. We're in L.A. It's over here. March 8th. Yeah. Because he died on the 9th. My birthday's the 9th. That's right, March 9th. And so we played the Clippers. We beat the Clippers. I did work. I did my thing. And, um, and so Tamiya's label is throwing a party. So after the game, I go with Tamiya. And I don't know if you know Jay Brown. Yeah. So Jay was at the label. We get in the limo. We go back to, to, to Tamiya's manager's house. First of all, I was the night that the first night, that was the first time I heard Hypnotize. It wasn't on the radio yet, but Just they had a disc. Mm -hmm. And they kept saying Detroit players, you know, mm -hmm. Pink Gators, Mighty. It's like, run that back, run that back. <laughs> we were in the limo every time, you know, hearing that song. So we go to the party. Now understand, T and I have been together almost a year. But it was the first time we had been out Public publicly. Time. Yeah. And so we walk in and everybody turns. Like everybody's looking at us because they, they hadn't seen us mm -hmm. out. But everybody was there. We saw Biggie, we saw Puffy. We weren't there long. We, we might have been there 10 minutes. We might have left five minutes before they left. Because mm. when we left, they were kind of near the door. And uh, by the time we got back to Timir's place, it had already circulated that mm. he got killed. And so it was, it was crazy. Um, it was a little weird thinking that they were out there. Because mm -hmm. it was still all that East Coast, West Coast stuff. And... Um, Shoot, that even happened with, with Tamia. Like, she got caught up. We, you know, we got caught up in a situation. Um, <laughs> she was in the studio working on her album. Stevie J mm -hmm. produced one of the songs. And so um, before I got there, I'm with Jay Brown. We're at Benny Hanna's, and we're doing sake bombs. And, uh, and so we come to the studio. So before we get there, they were in the commons room, Stevie J and his, and his, his bodyguard. And the outlaws are in the other studio. Mm. And so I guess they had words in, in, the, in the common area. Somebody pulled out a gun. So this all happens before we get there. So I show up, we get there, and 10 minutes after we get there, police come in, rifles drawn, paint, we're all on the wall. I'm thinking, like, this R&B session. Like, I'm like, man, what's... Right, this ain't rap, right. <laughs> and so, anyway, I found out what happened, and, you know, we... we I, don't, I don't know what ultimately happened, but I say that, that was... That was probably the summer of 97, so... so but it was just still tension, right. you know what I'm saying? And so, when we saw Biggie and them at the... It was just like... I mean, I didn't think what happened would happen, right. but it was just... It was, it was weird. Energy was off. Yeah, it was a weird night. Yeah. It was a weird night I for obvious about reasons. That. Real quick, before we get to quick hitters, the Grant Hill drink Sprite. I mean, to me, you know, that and Little Penny are kind of what I remember growing up from, like, athletes and commercials. So how did that come about and, and the idea and, and behind the uh, actual commercial? The idea, it was kind of genius, man. It was basically obey your thirst. Don't let somebody tell you to drink it. And so we're making fun of pitchmen and, uh, and making fun of myself. And so that was um, Sprite attaching himself, aligning himself with the NBA. You know, I got involved with that. Um, so we had, a, we had a great run, did a lot of fun commercials, uh, even did a commercial with Kobe um, his second year. <laughs> Crazy story. We did a commercial <laughs> together his second year. During the season, I fly out to L.A., now, I'm, I, at this point, I'm like, I'm the big, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, Kobe, the man, yeah. He's like, it's like yeah. midway, it's before the All-Star break. But he's young, he's got a lot, he's having a great second year. I fly out to L.A., and we're going to do this commercial where he's on, a, he's on one shoulder, I'm on the other shoulder, and we're going back and forth with this kid. And um, 
So when you do these commercials, you, you approve the script before you commit. So the script had been approved for, for a week. So I fly all the way out to L.A. on an off day. We get there, and the director comes in, <laughs> and he says, Kobe wants to rewrite the script. And I'm like, he wants to what? <laughs> he wants to rewrite the script. I'm like, all right. So they come back like 30, 45 minutes later. He got all the good lines now. <laughs> <laughs> he got all the good lines. And they're like, and I'm like, look, nah. I said, man, look, I come all the way out here. This is what I agreed to. Mm -hmm. If he wants to do this, I'm going to get back on the plane and fly back. And so, now meanwhile, we're in we're trailers right next to you. We just could have gone and talked to each other. But, but that was cold. Like, I, I, I kind of respect that he was bold enough mm -hmm. to want to do that. And anyway, we went back, we did a script that we, we agreed to. But yeah, the Sprite stuff, man, that was, that was fun. And, and um, poking fun at people having pitchmen mm -hmm. was the whole premise behind the Sprite campaign. So, yeah. so. Well, man, it's been a great interview. Quick hitters, first thing to come to mind, let us know. Duke, all-time starting five, including yourself. So you plus four, all-time Dukes, Dukies. Man, I gotta go with Leighton. He, he he did work. He was killing. He was a killer. He, I think Leighton is top three, top five, maybe all time in college, just in terms of his accomplishments. Leighton, I gotta go with. I gotta go with Johnny Dawkins because he kind of set Dawkins. it off. People don't people don't appreciate how talented he was. <sighs> you gonna get me in trouble, man? Two more. I, I'm gonna show the young fella some love, J Jason Tatum. Mm -hmm. I think when it's all said and done, I think yeah. he's going to be the best. Ooh. And he might, he might already be there. He, he, I don't know if there was a more skilled guy coming in out of high school. I had it all, you know, offensively. That final spot. Kyrie. Ooh. He was only there for nine days. And I know <laughs> yeah. sometimes we claim him, sometimes we don't. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah. talent, yeah, he, he was... He was uh, so Kyrie, Kyrie, Dawkins, yourself, Leitner... Jason Tatum. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. It's a nice five. Yeah, it's a nice five right there. What album can you listen to with no skips? Can't have your wife. No brownie points here. <laughs> Biggie's first album. Mm. Ready to uh, uh, ready, uh Born No. What's it? Born to Born to No. Born to Die. Born, born to, to die. die? Yeah, yeah. Born yeah. to Die. The little baby on the front. Yep. That's my first, that's my favorite one right there, yeah. I mean, you kind of already mentioned if you have a better story, but best Kobe or MJ story off the court? Uh, Kobe, probably like 98. Um, I go up one night. Tamia's living, she's living on the Wilshire Corridor. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we're, we're engaged at this point. And it's late. Like, I go to the men's gym at UCLA, maybe like midnight. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, re I'm redoing my shots. So I'm changing my mechanics. And I'm just going in there to do like just some set shots by myself. And I go in there and Kobe's in there and he's mm. lathered up mm. and he's got his guy. And uh, so I'm down at the other end and uh, he's like, you want to play one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I didn't because I'm like, like, I'm changing my shot. Like I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not there yet, but I'm like, I got it. Like I can't, got to. I can't say no. And uh, so we played one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm telling you, it was like a game seven in like late July. Like it was, I don't think I played that intense in the summer. And he was like, he was, I mean, you know. Like this he, is what, second years? Coming off his second year? 98, he's 96 drafted. Coming yeah. off his second year. Yeah. And so like the work ethic and, and how hard, like it, up until then, man, like I didn't really work on my game. And I just hooped mm -hmm. to play pickup ball. And that summer was when I started, okay, I'm going to start like working and getting better and trying things. And, and that was the hard part because I did it in 98, I did it in 99. And then after that, I never, I never worked on my game in the summer because I was hurt, I was trying to get healthy, and then finally got healthy. And now I didn't touch a ball in the summer. So those Phoenix years, I didn't, you know, I'm trying to preserve my mm -hmm. ankle. So the, 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 you know, going through, having a strategy, working on stuff, all of that, like I enjoyed doing that. Um, and a lot of it I got from being like watching this kid, this kid younger than me, grinding, mm. like getting after it by himself. It's like a Friday night. I'm all right, I'm wifed up. I'm chilling, you know. Mm -hmm. we, you know, I'm just wanting to go get some shots up late at night. 
and he's in the gym going at it. Mm-hmm. And um, and so that was That's that dope. was a moment that that um, that I remember. That was I was like, man, this kid. Yeah. This no, I remember my different. freshman year at UCLA is '98, so he used to be on campus all the time. We'd see him normally during the day, at night, yeah. working out, playing. It was. And and, and you know he he impacted a whole generation now that they do that. Yep. Yep. Work. They put that like mm-hmm. you know back in the day you might go and five spots five makes yep, I got some either. shots up you know what I'm saying but like he he put the work, work. in and mm-hmm. for sure it's a crazy question but I know your game and I didn't see you play so much and idolize you would you rather cross someone or dunk on someone but I've seen you do that too many times in the same play right. <laughs> right. those right. usually go hand in hand yeah so for you that go hand in hand but for the question say no maybe who the maybe the favorite per- the Someone you crossed up and dunked on. Like your that was your That was the shit. That was your patented thing. So you got a lot of people on that list. Was it so? It was always, it was always fun uh, dunking on Dikembe. Dikembe. Yeah, yes. I got him a couple times. The very and, few uh, people got him. And he, um, I used to tell him, I'm a clown, I'm a climb Mount Mutombo. I'm coming. <laughs> and um, he, no, no, you ain't going to get me. <laughs> right. and, uh, and so that back and forth. Um, the thing about Mut- Mutombo and Morning, they jump for everything. Yep. Yeah. And even if they got jumped, a lot of guys won't won't come over. <laughs> Shaq, they won't come yeah. over. Yeah. You know, they don't want to get posterized. But like Dikembe, he came every it. time. Every yeah. time. And he got he got got. He got got. Mm-hmm. You know? But he also blocked, blocked more than he got dunked. Oh, no yeah. question. Yeah. No question. For sure. For sure. Uh five dinner guests, dead or alive. What's that? Five dinner guests, dead or alive. You know what? You know, I was thinking, man, for my for my fiftieth. To get five, like five rappers that like I grew up and, and having them over for dinner, oh, dope. like Rakim, KRS One, mm. Kane. Mm. Man, they, people don't know you make beats, bro. Oh, you that Grant is nice oh. on the uh, keys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Super don't know, bro, bro, yeah, I used to send my beats to, uh, to me stack, some beats, man. Yes, yeah, nah, I, I, I rapped on one. I retired, man, because you know Tamia said I was. She started calling me Quincy Bones. <laughs> started calling me Piss Beats. <laughs> Piss Beats. <laughs> Damn. But she was like, you know, because you know, she she's like, where's the melody? Like, you know, I'm like, babe, look, look, it's not all. It's R and B is a different, you know. Right. But she, she, she her Piss thing was you spending too much time doing it for not getting a check. Yeah. You know, but I just I love it, man. I love music, and no, uh, when I listen to a song, I don't listen to the lyrics. I listen. To the music, mm. like what, what's the drum track? What's what's the bass line doing? What's so I you know I retired from making beats. But Did you make a beat for Rhapsody? Yeah, Rhapsody jump. Yeah, yeah. matter of fact, I, t- I went to the studio with Ninth Wonder back in the day, and I was trying to I was trying to chop the Sha- uh, Shalimar not Shalimar climax um, song, and I was I couldn't get what I wanted, so I put on Tamia, put on Still, and I chopped up the beginning part and put some drums over it. And she heard it. She was in the studio, and she went in and put it on her mixtape, yeah. Rhapsody. Mm, yeah. This is before she, yeah. before she blew That's up. Dope. And so, uh, but I always love music. So you're gonna get five legends to come to your birthday? Yeah, I got. I got to figure out. Figure I, I out like to list. get five yeah. rappers that I grew up right. that were like. And I, I know those three. I got to figure the other two. But it'd be fun to bring them in and That'd just, just chop it up with them. Mm-hmm. Trick question. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who would you like to see on All the Smoke? But. But. Who would you, I like to see on All the Smoke? On our show. But you have to help us get your answer on the show. Get, get that person on the show. Yep. Obama. I think that'd be cool. You heard what I said, though, right? You have to help us get that person on the show. Well, I don't know if I can. Let me, okay, let me think okay. of somebody else. Let me yeah. think of somebody else. Um, now, Grant, if anyone could probably oh, get Obama, it. it'd probably be Grant get to get him. Silver's been on, right? No, we haven't no. met Adam Silver yet. Adam, yeah. 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 I think we can get that done. He's a doogie, yeah, right? I want to ask him, do he's, uh, can I get some of my money back now that he looked at everything that's going <laughs> on and looked at the uh, bra? Like, do you really think I, I should have took my money? We was at work. I want to ask him that, seriously. <laughs> well, Adam always says this, so I'm repeating what Alan, Adam says, but... He works for me. <laughs> 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 he says that, so I'll repeat yeah. what he says. So yeah, I'll say G, we appreciate that. that. But that'd be right. nice. That'd be good. Yeah, that'd, that'd, that'd be, be a good I think he would do it, too. Got something for you, bro. Oh, man. Can't let you leave empty-handed. All the smoke gear from our new uh, line that's dropping. Where can they get that? All the smoke.store. If you didn't know, now you know. Go grab some. 
You might not look as good as us in it, but you can, <laughs> you can try. You can try. Yeah, you Sweat definitely suit. can try. Well, G, man, we appreciate you. We want to make sure you know how important you were to us. Oh, yes, man, man as, a, as a mentor, as an athlete, the way you live your life off the court as well. I mean, you've just been that dude, and, and we really feel like, you know, you're still one of the greatest players of oh, all time man, in our eyes. That. So we really appreciate your time. Stopping by, been chasing your ass for three years. Ah. We finally got you. <laughs> make sure you check out his book out yes. now. Where can they get the book? Get it everywhere. Amazon, bookstores. Buy the book. Buy the book. Gotta have it. It's a good story, man. Game out now. Happy you finally got it. First of all, I appreciate y'all, man. And I admire what y'all are doing. Y'all, y'all killing it, man. And um the feelings mutual. So I love the fact to hear, like I said, the fact that you got to unload. That's a heavy weight to carry. Yeah. I mean, as a fan of yours. And you guys need to write books. Yeah. At some point when the time's right, you need to tell your story. Because y'all got stories that Yeah, definitely. It completes no everybody, has. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I'm telling you, y'all, y'all Put the puzzle it. pieces together. Yeah. Gee, thank you, man. Right, man. Appreciate, appreciate you, you, love you, man. Love you, man. This is how I know it's some, some feelings expressed in here. You ain't getting no fresh cut on the, on the cover. Oh, no, no, I wanted to That be. was on purpose. It was, Trust me, I know you. It was intentional. I know you It was intentional. It was intentional. I know. Didn't no I line know up or nothing. Well. Yeah, it was, you know, that know was, you was well. symbolism yes. with that. Yeah. Yes, I can't wait to read it. I'm telling you, y'all should write a book. That's a wrap. Grant Hill, you can catch us on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. See y'all next week. Peace. Go get the book. I'm not comfortable living in a hot dog. It's still way better than your house, kitty. I can't do this anymore, Mom. If you won't listen to me, then I really don't have a choice. So you're running away? South Park, the streaming wars. Now streaming. Okay, well, I'll see ya. Bye, honey. Kiss. Exclusively on Paramount Plus.